very good afternoon to you, to you viewers. Welcome once again to your weekly program, In Perspective. This program is uh, being here on NTN Channel 26, right here at Team, on Saturday from 8.30, from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. And on Sunday, on the Rock Television in Amsterdam from 5 to 6 p.m. This program is very informative, is interactive. At the same time, I would like to hear what is taking place here in your community, what is taking place in around you, and your views on the present situation in the country. As you know, that the most topical issue now in the country is elections, because since the 21st of December last year, the Parliament, the National Assembly, the People's Progressive Party has moved a um, no confidence motion in the National Assembly and it was unanimous and it was passed by 33 votes. As a result of that, this government should have hold election within three months. Initially, and I just want to refresh your memory. Initially, on the night of the 21st, the entire side of the PN Afnu EFC uh, side of the parliament went to a press conference and accepted that the government has fallen. As a result of that, the Prime Minister said that the government and the country will have to prepare for fresh elections. Subsequently to that, the President the following day said that he will abide with the constitution of the country. But since then, we are seeing excuse after excuse from this government not to go and face the electorate, not to go and hold elections. And they are afraid of the poll because of their law and performance over the last four years. And this came about because we have witnessed in our country massive corruption that are taking place. We have witnessed where development has stagnated. We have witnessed where the crisis has gone so much that in every facet in life, you are getting, people are getting severe problems. And when you look at the track record of this government, it's nothing to boast about. That's the reason they are afraid to go and face the electorate. And we are seeing that they are trying to buy time and hold on to office illegally. Now, the elections, or the election could, should have been held since before the 21st of March. Because from the 21st of December to the 21st of March, was the, uh, that, that was three months that has elapsed and in the Constitution, Article 1066 and 1067 clearly state that upon a successful passage of a no-confidence motion, the government, the president, his cabinet, has, uh, they have to resign and call elections within 90 days or three months. What we have witnessed over the last six months we have seen that this government is bent on holding on to office illegally. They are trying all their best to hold on to government and hold on to office. But they are illegal. They are illegal in government today because since the 21st of March has expired, they have become illegal. And we have witnessed now that this government is in office illegally for the last four months. Although that is happening, or that has happened, they are still going about like everything is normal. Everything is normal. They have violated our constitution. They are going to parliament, making new legislation. They are going to parliament to get more money to be expended in different sectors. They are going and passing new laws. And they are illegal in office because the term of it has expired since the 21st of March. And we are witnessing that the cabinet is still meeting. Although this government is illegal, the cabinet is still meeting 
making different laws there. And if a country, if you have a, in a country that the government don't abide and work with the constitution, then we'll have chaos and confusion will reign in our country. So I will deal today and with the and we are seeing all the excuses. All the excuses that they are using or they have been used over the last three to four months or over the last six months. We are see, we are see witnessing that all the excuses now are coming to an end. And they will have to face election. They will have to face election. So I want to just give you a little fact. Some facts that are applicable to the um, the reason why this government does not want to go to an election. And when you look when you look at the track record of this government, let us look at this uh, at the track record of this government. Since taking office, this government has put forward five budgets. Five budgets they have passed in the National Assembly. They have spent one point three trillion dollars, not bill million, not billion, trillion dollars. They borrow over 900 million US dollars and increase taxes approximately 88 billion dollars per year per annum. So over the last five years, we have seen our taxes, they have increased by 88 billion dollars per annum. This is the track record of this government. And they, we have seen their lifestyle have gone up. We have seen the extravagance way they have been living. And while all those things are taking place, over 30,000 Guyanese have lost their jobs. That's the track record of this government over the last four years. So what people were enjoying before May 2015, things that they normally the populace used to enjoy and used to benefit from, this government has denied them. And they have put more burdens on the Guyanese people, where I mentioned it, in $8 billion per annum. They have borrowed over $900 million US dollars more. So Guyana has been indebted more now, over by $900 million US dollars. And they have expended $1.3 trillion. So let us look at the amount of money that they claim they spent. Where is the development? Where is the development? We have seen over the last four years how the, 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 the corruption that has been taking place in our country. So that's the track record of this government. And that's the main reason, my viewers, that's the main reason they are afraid of going to face the electorate. And the extravagant way they have been living and they have been running, the, uh, uh, they have been placing themselves over the last four years. Every time, every international conferences, every time they want to travel, they use taxpayers' money to travel overseas. Every month, two, three, four ministers are out of the government, are out of the country, traveling abroad, traveling abroad. Some of them travel first class with their family, and taxpayers have to, uh, have to pay for those traveling. Pay for their hotel bills overseas. Give, uh, give them money to spend overseas. And then the corruption. For the first time ever, and you could check it, for the first time ever in our country's history, Guyana was cited for government corruption as a source of money laundering in the 2018 International Narcotics Control Strategy Report. Currently, the APNU government is, is involved with over 50 corruption scandals. And I can list some of them, the major ones. Dorman Park. Remember when they got into government, they want to build a new park. Instead of going to the National Park to make a mark or an independence anniversary, like what previous governments did, 
we have we have the national park we have the Guyana national stadium we have our facility they went and they would say they want to build their own park so they went and built Dorman Park Dorman Park is the corruption is so much there that the Auditor General said that when he asking for certain documents he cannot find and they cannot produce those documents over six hundred million dollars has been unaccounted for for the Dorman Park project. That project now is falling apart. Place the stand, the stand there, they are rotten, boards, boards, and they loose it and they're falling apart. That's the condition. They where they spent almost almost two billion dollars to build. Six hundred million dollars has been unaccounted for. And then uh, we see the success street. You remember the drug ban? Where they rent a small house to store drugs? And when we questioned it in the National Assembly, and we challenged them that not a single tablet is being stored here, they denied it. And then the speaker set up a team from our side and there and them to go and visit the, the drug ban, what they claimed. And when we sent people to our representative, what we found was blue wire and condoms were stored here, small amounts. But the drugs ban, the place that they, 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 they rented, was owned by one of their friends who were financing them during the elections campaign. So they wanted to repair that person, so they rented his property. They rented his property and over $327 million was expended there without any proper drugs being stored. So the man, the, man, the person who owned that place probably received five times, five times of the, the, the value of that property and the man still owned the property and he received $327 million. Then we all remember the Demerara, the new Demerara bridge that they said they want to build. They had a feasibility, a feasibility study to build a new Demerara Harbor bridge. The National Procurement Board was supposed to award the contract to the company to conduct the feasibility study for the new Demerara Harbor bridge. Instead, what they did, there was a recommendation by a particular minister for a company. It went to the cabinet and the cabinet said, yes, go ahead and do it. And $148 million was paid to that company for the feasibility study of the new Demerara Harbor Bridge. And after the study, uh, after the document was, was completed, it was scrapped. So there again we lost $148 million. The health ministry has illegally spent billions of drugs and medical supplies. And when you go to the hospitals and the health centers, you can get basic drugs, things like Panadol, things like diabetes medication, metformin. You go to the hospital, sometimes they don't have film to do x-rays. You have to go to private hospital. Right? So all these things they claim. They are claiming that they, spend, they are spending large sums of money. And when you go to the institute, these medical institutions, you are not getting any proper medical treatment. Medical treatment. So that's the reason, my viewers, that's the reason they are afraid of going to the polls. Not only PDP supporters will, vote, uh, will not vote for them. Their own supporters now are fed up. Their own supporters will come a, bit, a, a little later and tell you what is taking place in the country because I have been traveling the length and breadth of this country in all the regions of this country and I can tell you the economic situation is so severe that people can hardly afford one meal one meal per day people are suffering people are suffering and not only in areas where we had the estuary state closed. If you go into the army, in the, the interior, the army, in the communities, you could see what's taking place there. If you go into their own 
support area where they claim. Places like Linden, places like Boxster's, places like Anne's Grove, places like Victoria. Their own supporters are complaining against them, saying that they need an election already to get out these people, to get out these people from there, from there. that these people not even won the promises they have made, not even one they have fulfilled over the last four years. Y'all remember before 2015 when we had the elections campaign, people like Nagamutu, Ramjatan used to come right here in Barbies at DTV on a Saturday evening saying that the PPP government was robbing sugar workers, that sugar workers deserve more money. Well, we have seen, we have lived to see Nagamutu's salary was increased by almost 75%. The first two weeks in government, the first two weeks in government, these people increased their salaries from 50 to 100%. And the term that was coined by Nagamutu when we were in government, he was calling our minister, he was calling our minister salaries for cat salaries. Well, I don't know what cat, what kind of cat salary he is receiving doing nothing. Nakamoto doesn't have any portfolio. He does just have responsibility for Canical, NCM, and the DPI, those, those three things. In our government, the Prime Minister has had responsibility for electricity, had uh, 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 responsibility for mining, and parts of public works. Parts of public works. But this Prime Minister, doing nothing, Enjoying the big life, shopping all over the world. We went to Sri Lanka, went to India, going to the United States many, many times with his friends, families, and so on. We have to pay. These are the things. That's the reason. Because of the track records, the extravagance way they have been living over the last four years, the corruption that has been taking place, we have had the no confidence motion in December. The no confidence motion. You all remember. You all remember when we had the budget debate. And Nari stood up in the parliament. And she said that they had a, they had a solid 33. And the PPP had an uh, indecisive 32. And they are not afraid of a no confidence motion. Let us bring it on. When the no confidence motion was brought on. The no confidence motion was brought on on the 21st of December. And when the motion was carried, and the speaker ruled that the motion was carried, some of them nearly had a heart attack in the parliament, including the person, people like Amna Ali and company. They were struck. They, you, could see the, you could see one of them was whispering to another minister, let us walk out, let us walk out, you know. That's the kind of way these people, they don't care about law and order. They don't want to abide with law and order, and we are seeing it. We are seeing it. And we used to say, we used to tell in, uh, inform people, we used to say that these people only interested in power. These people only interested in power. People like Nagamoto and Ramjitan knew who these people were. That is why in the PPP, Ramjitan was expelled because of his way of doing things. Nagamoto, a soup drinker, we know he is a soup drinker wrong. That is why the PPP, when he was Minister of Information, uh, rather than to promote, uh, promote the President at that time, Dr. Cherry Jagan, he was promoting himself. And he came and said, Dr. Jagan promised him to be the next President of the country. Well, the PPP don't work like that. The PPP has a democratic process. How we elect our presidential candidate. Nagamoto can dictate that he wants to be the president of our country, or uh, uh, the presidential candidate of our party, and we'll put him there. They have the, that guy has an inflated ego. That guy's ego is so big, is everything about himself. So we have seen, he has deflected from the PDP and gone to the AFC. He went there and he got the prime, minister, prime ministerial candidate and he became the prime minister. Well, recently we have seen the AFC dump him. Dump him and say that you will not be our Prime Minister or candidate anymore. It's time to go by. Then they now nominated Ramjatan. So we are seeing he's changing tune today. 
this change in tune when they went to Bartika. Now Ramutu said that he put on, you know, he changed from the red shirt when he was in the PPP, gone to the yellow shirt in the uh, AFC. Now he changed and he said he put on his back green, the afternoon color. So that means he's quoting the afternoon day to make him the Prime Ministerial candidate. So let's see what will happen. But anyway, none of them will have the Prime Ministerialship anymore because they know, they know whenever elections are held, they will be out of government. That is why they are afraid. So the no confidence motion that was brought on on the 24th of December, we have seen that the government has fallen. They took the matter to the court. The High Court ruled that the no confidence motion was validly passed. At the appeal court, we had we, we saw a split decision there where two judges uphold the weakest argument and said that the no confidence motion um, needed 34 votes. Well, the highest court in our land has spoken, and that court is Caribbean Court of Justice said that the no confidence motion was validly passed, was successfully passed. As a result of that, we are awaiting now the consequential order from the Caribbean Court of Justice so that we can have elections early. Our, um, our, plan, uh, our, our, our position is that elections has to be held within three months of the decision of the CCG. Because no court will go outside a constitution. No court will violate any constitution. And our constitution clearly states that election upon a, 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 a successful passage of a no confidence motion, election has to be held within three months. So we are seeing all kinds of excuses. The first violation that they did, when we remember when the 18 names that were submitted by the leader of the opposition, Dr. Barjakeo, to the president, and he refused all those names, and he said that those persons are not, or those people are not fit and proper. But he went, and he unconstitutionally appointed an 84-year-old guy who could hardly um, be up for an hour and a half in a meeting. Before a meeting finished, he just fell asleep. Can't control a meeting. But he put him there, and we have seen over the last year and a half that he was there, he took all the positions that the APNU wanted. He took all the positions that the APNU wanted. All the votes that were taken during his tenure, he voted with the APNU AFC councillors, um, commissioners. So they placed him there to do their work. So the Caribbean Courts of Justice, after I had challenges, challenged the matter, in the court, the Caribbean Court of Justice ruled that the chairman was unconstitutionally appointed and his appointment was flawed. As a result of that, we have seen new talks now. New talks have um, started. The leader of the opposition has met with the president last Thursday and both sides said it was a fruitful talk and let us, let us give the president the benefit of the doubt and, say, and, 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 and wait that within days he will appoint a new chairman. Also, the leader of the opposition have said that he have agreed to look back at the list of the 18 persons that he submitted to him, the president, so that he can work with that list force. The opposition leader also indicated to the Guyanese nation that he had other persons to submit to. So these things these, these issues now are in the public domain and we have seen they are still holding on for house to house registration. So let us be very frank. Let us be very frank with this house to house registration. We have had elections in 2011. We have had another national and regional elections in 2015. We have had local government elections in 2015. We have had another local government election in 2018. And we have not had any, any house-to-house -house registration. No house-to-house -house registration 
we, 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 we had. So the point I want to make, why they are calling for house to house registration? That is the last excuse that they hold it on to. Guyanese are fed up with these people. Guyanese are demanding that we have elections within three months. Now, they want to hold house to house registration because I think based on a press conference that the PNC had yesterday, based on a press conference that the PNC had yesterday at their place, we are hearing that they will win 10 seats. They are already predicting that if we have a house to house registration, that they feel up new years, you will win 10 seats above the opposition. So they are predicting. So what they want to do with the new list? This list that we have had, Lowell Field, the chief election officer, in February of this year, said that the list is clean. The chief election officer said in February that the list is clean. When the no confidence motion was passed, the PRO of the elections commission said they are ready for election within three months. But they want to, they want to do their own things. They want to do their own things. What they want to do? Let us ask ourselves why these people are insisting that we should have house house registration. If they felt that they wanted house house registration, since they got into office in 2015, why they did not mooted the idea of bringing out source registration in 2015? We are not afraid of house source registration, but we have had two house source registration, and those registration took 18 months, 18 months to be completed. So if we start house source registration now, we can in another 18 months. One year and six months that will complete. This is the kind of way they want to hold on to government. There is no need for house to house registration. There, are no, there is no need for house to house registration. Whenever GCOM, whenever GCOM do continuous registration, they normally register, they normally register person for 14 years and above. And many of you, your children, viewers, or your child, those who did not vote in the 2018 local government election, they did not did they, they didn't do house to house registration in 2018 or uh, 2016. Those who are young in 2016 to vote in the 2016 local government election, they became a, a year in 2018, and they were they voted. They they didn't have to do house to house registration to get those young persons. There is a system in our country that all the parliamentary parties have accepted that we'll have a process of two cycles of continuous registration per year and we'll register person. So if election, if a registration starts this month, they will have a qualifying date say in October. So those persons will be 14 years and over by October the 31st, 2019, will be entitled to register in a continuous registration or claims and objections. So there are laws. There are laws governing people name to be placed on the on the list, the elections list, the voters list, and there are laws to remove people names from the list. But you know, these people they want to disenfranchise a number of Guyanese. Because normally you do social registration now people don't necessarily go abroad and so for some holidays. So if the registration officer comes to your home and you're not at home, then they pass you and when the new voters list comes out, your name will not be on that list. So they plan to disenfranchise a number of PVP supporters. That's the main idea. How about the Lawrence? can come out and say they will win the election if you have house house registration with a maximum of 10 seats above the opposition or the other parties. 
They have a plan to rig it. So we have to be very vigilant. The list, any person can, can, go, on, can go on the voters list by claims and objection. And we have had that in all the elections. You can go and register. Young person will be 18, can go and register. There are not many young persons uh, who are 18 named out of the list because normally G comes update the list almost two twice or uh, uh, once or twice a year. So the place people who become of age to put them at the voters roll. So young people names are on the list. And if you don't believe me, young people, the young people who are, who did not have uh, who did not get to vote in the 2016 election, you voted in the 2018 election or name on the voters list in the last local government election. You go check it. You go online and go to GCOP website and you'll see the last voters list. And you see when, when it became 18 years. If elections is held this year, all those persons who will be 18 years of age this year will be placed on the list because GCOP already has that, uh, have those records there in their database. Now, those people who need transfer, can, that can be done also when you have the claims and objection. So if you come from Skelton and you're living in Thiel, or you come from, or you move from Region 6 and down to Region 5, when the claims and objections start, you can go to the office and get yourself transferred to your present address. Those people who have to do corrections to the name can do the same thing, and, uh, the same process can happen when you have claims and objections. Those persons who need a name change can do that when you have claims and objections. Now, if there are fake persons on the list, as the president said, as the president is claiming, which is a blatant lie, which is blatant misinformation, 200 names, there's a system also during claims and objections. You can go and object to those names. If the president knows that if the president knows that 200 voters on the list are fake, let him go. Let the president go and object to those 200 names and provide the proof. He shouldn't say that because I don't think he's getting proper advice who is advising him. All the legal matters we have lost. Yesterday we, are, we saw the High Court, the Court of Appeal, rule that the, the Minister of Finance is in contempt of court. If you don't pay the card by Monday, you'll be in jail. So they are not getting proper legal representation. And the president is not getting proper legal advice. If he doesn't know, he can go and ask. He can go and ask his commissioners at GCOM. He should go and ask the chief elections officer. These things I have said, these are practical things. So everywhere, everywhere you go in this country, People are demanding that we have elections early. We should have elections within the next three months. And that is our party's position on the matter. We are awaiting the orders on the 12th, the consequential order for the Caribbean Court of Justice. We, have, uh, we are awaiting those orders. And after that, we will inform the Guyanese public. So, yesterday, I want to report to you that thousands of Guyanese turned out in their numbers in Georgetown by the Ministry of the Presidency and there we had a massive protest. People from all walks of life, people from different strata, people from various backgrounds. You had workers, you had farmers, you had intellectuals, you had office workers, every single person who feel that we should have elections early were there, thousands of people were there yesterday by the Sinjan Road, by the office, Ministry of the Presidency, the Office of the President, demonstrating for hours, demonstrating in the rain. They were, these people, ordinary people, people who feel that we, the, our democracy is a, 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 a threaten, people who feel that our country is heading into a dictatorship, People who are saying that this government is violating our constitution. They were there in their numbers yesterday. They were there in their number yesterday to, to, to register their protest. Calling on the government. 
that they should resign and hold elections now. Now is the time to hold elections. So this thing about house to house registration is just a smoke screen for the APNU and the AFC and the PNC. They let the cap out, Balalaris let the cap out. They want to win the election by 10 seats. So they will do a list that will, let out, uh, uh, that, that will leave out a number of persons. And when the time comes, they will be in office for another year or something just to prop themselves up illegally. Because they don't want to lose the good life. The motto and uh, the, the, the campaign slogan in 2050, no guy is enjoying it themselves. They rented house for five hundred thousand dollars for ministers. They increased their salaries from fifty to hundred percent. They 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 going off all over the world. All over the world they're traveling. The corruption, the corruption that are taking place. While those things are happening, the workers are being dismissed. Not only sugar workers, where seven thousand five hundred sugar workers have lost their jobs. Public servants. If you don't, if you don't support their ideas, public servants, people in the private sector, places like Barama, all of them, all these places, they have dismissed workers. But the business environment is no good in our, not good in our country. If you go around today, the private sector is saying business are so bad. So yesterday we had this massive protest. And I want to close this program, sorry not to take your call this evening, but what I want to our viewers to have a look at the protesters yesterday and tell you that after the protest yesterday, the protesters are those persons that attended the protest. They were addressed by our presidential candidate, Comrade Irfan Ali, young educated, vibrant, and the leader of the opposition and general secretary of our party, Comrade Barrett Jack David. So I will close with the address by both of them to the, part, to the people who were there yesterday. And you could see, and you could view for yourself, viewers, you could see the number of persons that turned out in this massive protest yesterday, calling on this government to respect our constitution. Calling on this government to call elections now. Calling on this illegal government to resign now. Look and enjoy the address by our General Secretary, Comrade Barrett Jagdeem, and our presidential candidate, Comrade Infanali. Until next week, this is your host, Zulfi, saying so long. Thank you very much.